Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're looking at a Quadmula Siren F3 custom build. I'm Jeff with Titan FPV. First order of business guys, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. Click that notification bell. You'll be notified when I upload all content like this and others to the channel. So we didn't hit the numbers uh, for the requirement to do a giveaway. Uh, but I went ahead and did a build. If you've checked out my just my frame review, I'll post that link up here in the video description. You can check that one out. Uh, I did go ahead and do a build with this frame because it's just got a lot of good components and I feel like it would be a travesty if I didn't bring out this content to you guys. So this is my build. Uh, yours may be the slightly different. You can build it up uh, digital if you want. I built this specific quad as analog um, especially with the new HD Zero goggles, uh, a lot of us are still flying analog, and I felt like this was a good time to uh, use analog on a new micro build. So that's what we did today. I'm going to go over the specs and the build sheet. Uh, I would like to go ahead and do a giveaway, so that's kind of a surprise announcement. Um, once this video hits 2,000 views, I will do a follow-up video with the requirements on the giveaway. Look forward to that. Make sure you're subscribed and have your subscriptions public so you get a chance to win this amazing build. All right, without further ado, let's dive into the components here. All right, for motors, we've got these Apex Racing 1408 3800 kV motors. These are nice 4S motors for a three inch prop. Speaking of props, we've got these Gem Fan 3028 Wind Dancers. I wanted something that would be efficient, but provide plenty of pop. Now you can go with a much higher pitch prop, but for a five millimeter shaft, a three inch motor, there's not a whole lot of options that are lower pitch. I think Azure Power makes like a 3060 prop. Uh, HQ makes like a, I think it's a 3052. So there's not a lot of lower pitch props available. And uh, these are what I had laying around and, they worked out quite well. Now this one is running Betaflight uh, 4.4. I think I'm on RC3 when I made this build, but I do have uh, the UAV Tech toothpick preset and it's flying, it's flying well. I mean, it probably could be tightened up on the tune a little bit. Now for the stack, I'm running this uh, HDLRC. I think it's a F420 stack with a 20 amp 4-in-1 ESC. Now, something that's unique to this stack, uh, this is not the newest stack, but it is working fine and flying smoothly on 4.4. The SC and flight controller connector is on the back. So this flight controller is orientated normal. The gyro is going uh, forward, is going this way, as it should be. But the plug, as you can see, uh, comes out below the solder pad. So a little bit unique, but uh, it's getting the job done. There is a low ESR capacitor. It looks like this is a 35 volt, uh, maybe 400 microfarad low ESR capacitor on there. We do have an XT30 connector. For the camera up front, I have the Foxeer Falcor 2. It's a micro camera. This is uh, Foxeer's best camera before the T-Rex came out, I believe. Still a great image as you'll see in the DVR footage. Um, for the Receiver, I'm going with a Radio Master EP2. Now, the new ones, I believe, are RP2s, but this is similar to the Happy Model EP2, but anyways, it does have the ceramic antenna mounted here in the frame. I'm, I'm not having any issues with the range with Express LRS. I believe it's running 2.5. Now, when I ship this uh, giveaway out, I will flash it with uh, without my bind phrase so you can bind it up to your radio. For the video transmitter, I'm running the Eosheen Nano V3. Now this one does have a couple different mounting points. It does have a whoop mounting. Now the Quadmula Siren, this is the, not the split deck version of the F3. It does have a couple different mounting. So it does have whoop mounting here in the back as well as 20 by 20. I went ahead and broke those other tabs off and I've got it mounted with these two standoffs, these spacers, so it's gonna allow plenty of cooling back there. For the antenna, 
I am running this dipole that ships with the uh, ESG Nano. Now the cool thing about this frame, I talked about it before in the previous video, uh, is the TPU and how they have this antenna mount. It's like a two piece setup here. So you can mount your VTX and then you can slip your VTX antenna through here. There's a, a crease right here, a cutout, and then you just put this other piece on here to lock that in now. Now it is a kind of a, a tight fit there. I would like maybe a slightly longer antenna, so you just will have to be aware of that. I haven't had any detachments uh, on the antenna, but just do be aware of that. Uh, if you receive this build, you may want to potentially put some um, E6000 on there or some liquid tape, I think is what they call it, to secure the antenna. Same thing that TBS uses to secure the UFL, but I mean, it hasn't been an issue for me. You got the skids. These are uh, user replaceable arms. If there is an extra arm, I will include that in the shipment. You got these recessed screws on the bottom. And I believe these are 1.5 millimeter. Next driver to use to install these screws. So they're slightly smaller for the front standoffs. If you're changing out the hardware, you will need a 1.5 and a two millimeter hex driver. Now it does include uh, two battery straps. I just went with one. I'm just running this Tattoo R-Line 4S 750. This is a 95C. These are good packs. Uh, you can go with an 850 or probably as small as a 650, but now these 1408s, they will draw a lot of amps under load. Not so much with these lower pitch props, but depending on what you're running, uh, I believe I was getting about three and a half to four minutes, just depending on how I flew. Now this will carry a camera. If they included a camera mount, I will include that. I'll let you know that in the next video there. I didn't fly with an action camera. I would suggest something like a Runcam Thumb Pro 4K. If you haven't seen my review of that camera, check it out. I'll post it up here in the upper right. That's going to be a good solution for an action camera. You may be able to use like a Session 5 uh, or a Runcam 5 Orange. Now that's going to be a bit heavier. It would be nice if you could fit three and a half inch props. Unfortunately, you can't on this airframe. Three inch is a good size. Motor wise, uh, these are good. These work well. Uh, it's the correct KV for 4S on a three inch prop. T Motor has a 1604, I believe. That would work well. I think they also make a 1503.5 motor. That would be another good solution. I believe some people have been doing their builds up like with that. Now this is analog, so it's going to be lighter. Shorter, wider motor would probably perform well on this. These motors are just what I had laying around. Now these are previously owned motors, but uh, as you see, I had to splice the wires. We still got those good, nice, pretty solder joints there. Nice and shiny. If you haven't checked out my soldering pro tips, I use Kester solder. This is not a promotion. For castor solder i just like it it works well it makes your work look good easily so check that video out i'll post that up here in the upper right hand corner it does come with this nice non-slip battery pad i didn't secure this down you could this lead uh, for some strain relief i didn't have any issue there there's plenty of uh Plenty of wire running out there. I felt like it fit weird when I tried to uh, run a zip tie on here and I didn't like how it bound up. It's got plenty of room there and it comes up here through the frame. I didn't, I didn't like the way it bound up uh, when I had this secured to one of these uh, standoffs. All right, let's get a wait for you guys. All right, the dry weight is coming in at 181.1 grams with this tattoo 4s 750 we're coming in at 264.8 grams so not under the 250 gram limit you could easily meet that limit if you went with something like a 4s 650 or if you went with a smaller motor I didn't notice any issues with this frame it worked fine out of the box with the UV tech presets um, I'll post a link to his website and his channel if you want to check those out. It's easy to select the presets there in Betaflight 4.4. I do like the option of the removable arms and the chamfering of the frame. I believe these are what, three millimeter arms looks like. They do have props in view. 
I don't believe you will have those with the, an action camera based on the, but you can see those in the FPV feed. This frame, as I stated before, will fit the O3 Air unit. There's a special um, mounting bracket for the camera. There's not a whole lot of options for three inch freestyle frames. There are more now. Um, traditionally, this size uh, frame was more of a racer uh, bottom mount battery, but uh, I like the top mount battery that this frame offers. I mean, things like the Apex, there's another three inch. Uh, fit and finish is unparalleled. I mean, look at these feet. They've provided these aluminum inserts. So this, the motor screws sit flush. This, this like green sparkly TPU, it's kind of hard to explain it. I haven't seen anything like it. The prints are super nice. If you're thinking about picking up this frame, I believe they have uh, additional prints available if you don't own a 3D printer. Uh, can't say much negative about this frame. It's pretty stiff, plenty of room inside. Of course, I built this one up analog, but if you choose to build this one up DJI or HD0, you shouldn't have a problem. Now, you, uh, you probably won't be able to fit the HD0 Freestyle VTX without some modification. And this is a 25 by 25 mounting here in the rear. But if you do run a walk snail avatar, uh, their VTX will fit back here easily, as well as, you know, the Whoop or Whoop White HD0 board. What do you guys think? Are you guys impressed? I know I am. Um, they also offer some five inch frames. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to review one of those. I'd love to do a build on those. This is the Quamula Siren F3. This is the non-split version. I'll post a link in the video description. You can pick one of these guys up. But uh, I want to thank you again for tuning in. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Post a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.